Shout out to all my Australia. Shout out, shout out, shout out to all my Australia peeps. So I've got this question from Newth South Newth. Newth. Now I there is a little bit of confusion right now. No, I guess I guess that should work. I'm gonna cut this part of the video out because I don't think that's true actually. Uh, shout out to my notification squad as well. Good morning. Uh, Good afternoon, good evening, I don't know what time it is where you are. Maybe you're in Australia. I'm hoping I get some uh, Australian viewers for this one because I'm looking at a question today for our Thursday Math Minute. I think I'm gonna post this on a Thursday. Only Math Minute guaranteed to be on Thursday. Only Math Minute guaranteed to be no more than 10 minutes long. I'm looking at this question from New South Wales, which if I understand correctly, is in Australia. It's, you know, one of those, one of these questions that pops up on the internet every once in a while, like, oh my gosh, can you believe this question that was on some test? I can't believe they expect toddlers to be able to do this or, you know, whatever it is. I actually don't know what the grade level is. Um, I teach typically on a regular basis, eighth graders in the United States. That means like 13 or 14 year olds. And I think with a bit of preparation, they could do this question. Maybe I'm overestimating their abilities. Uh, I'm gonna make them watch this, so feel good, students. I'm, if anything, overestimating what I think you could accomplish. I think my 13 and 14 year olds could do this question, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. It is a really weirdly stated question. And what I'm interested in here is not so much the process of answering this question, though I will go through that as we move through the problem. I'm more interested in how teachers or educators construct questions like this. So you can read it, uh, maybe pause the, no, I guess maybe I should read it. Uh, a cricket is an insect, good start. The male cricket produces a chirping sound and some scientist wants to explore the relationship between the temperature in degrees Celsius and the number of cricket chirps heard in a 15 second time interval. Once a day for 20 days, the scientist collects data. Based on the 20 data points, the scientist provides the information below. A box plot of the temperature data is shown. So we're looking at temperature data and the different temperatures must fall into these four areas. If you know how a box plot works, you know this represents a quarter of the data. So 25%, five of the days, I guess, since there were 20 days, fall into that area. Another five days fall into that area. Another five days from 22 to 25 degrees Celsius, and then finally the other five days from 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. Right away, one thing that you should know about a box plot is that right here in the middle is the median. And so the median day would have been 22 degrees Celsius. If it had been a different median, depending on the temperatures that fall into those different areas, we would have drawn the box plot differently. So this next part where they tell us the mean temperature in the data set is 0.525 degrees Celsius below that median temperature. If we didn't know what the median was from the box plot, we wouldn't be able to say what the mean temperature is. So this is the first step where the math teacher or the educator is kind of doing some sleight of hand. They are making you work for the mean temperature instead of just giving you the mean temperature. So you have to be able to read a box plot here to discover the median temperature. And then of course you would have to recognize, oh, well 0.525 degrees Celsius below that median temperature gives me the mean. So let's go ahead and work that out though. The mean temperature should be the median, which we just said was 22 degrees Celsius, minus 0.525. And so we've got a mean temperature of 21.475 degrees Celsius. A total of 684 chirps were counted across the 20 data points. Anytime you're getting a total, you should probably be thinking average. So over here, I'm just going to jot down, well, 684 chirps across 20 uh, different measures of temperature means that the average measurement, so maybe I'll say 20 measures, the average measurement would be whatever 684 divided by 20 is. So 34.2 chirps per measure. And so again, you can see we're given enough information to find each one of these steps, but it's kind of at one or two steps removed. We have to do something with the information. Uh, and then it gets really complicated, or at least starts using words that confuse people. 
The scientist fits a least squares regression line using the data x comma y, where x is the temperature in degrees Celsius and y is the number of chirps heard in a 15 second time interval. The equation of this line is y equals negative 10.6063 plus bx, where b is the slope of the regression line. And again, I'd pause here because I would say, uh, why, has, why have they kept the slope from us? Right? Why would they tell us what is the y-intercept? Hopefully you know this is the y-intercept, and this is where my eighth graders should definitely know. OK, so that's 0 comma 10.6063. Why would they tell us the y-intercept but not the slope? For that matter, they gave us this box plot up here, but why wouldn't they just give us the actual data and then we could run a regression using our calculators or using a computer? Or I suppose we could even do it by hand. But why do they keep withholding these pieces of information from us? The least squares regression line passes through the point x mean, y mean, where x is the sample mean of the temperature data and y is the sample mean of the chirp data. And the question, I guess it's not listed here, uh, but I think the question was make a prediction for what happens at 19 degrees Celsius. Well, let's just imagine that they had simply told us the slope on that previous piece of information. If they had just said it was roughly two. So that means that we think for each additional degree of temperature, there are two more chirps heard in a 15 second interval. So as it warms up, the crickets get more excited. I don't know, they chirp more. If they had simply told us the slope, and then said, we'll make a prediction for 19 degrees Celsius. What that really means is just plug in 19 for x and then work that out. So negative 10.6063 plus 2 times 19. That's negative 10.6063 plus 38. And so that works out to be what? Negative positive 27.393 Maybe we need to double check that. 38 minus 10.6063. Oh, why did I double check? If they had simply told us the slope or given us the equation and said, hey, what's going on when the temperature outside is 19 degrees Celsius? This is a very straightforward plug and chug, right? The whole purpose of all this other information, all this other mathematical sleight of hand, was to make it more difficult to get to that point. So first they take away the slope, but they give us other information to find the slope. You'll notice they've given us a y-intercept, right? And they've given us this point x mean comma y mean. But they didn't actually tell us what the x mean was and what the y mean was. For that, we have to go back to this bullet point, which we figured out from the median. We also have to go back to this piece of information over here, 684 chirps across the 20 measurements to figure out how many average chirps per measurement there were. So you can see at each stage, they're taking some piece of information away from us and making it a little bit more difficult to just eventually get to that point where we're plugging some number in. Once we recognize that, and we write down our data. We've got 21.475, that was the mean temperature, comma 34.2, that was the mean chirps per measurement. And they said that this line, y equals, let's see, y equals negative 10.6063 plus bx, we know that this line passes through that data point. What we can do at this point is figure out our slope or actually plug these points in and see well what on earth does the slope need to be based on that information. I think the easier thing to do here is probably to figure out the slope given the fact that we also know the y-intercept is 0 comma negative 10.6063. And so that's what I did here. I went ahead and figured out slope. Our delta y would come from 34.2 that is this piece of information right here, minus the negative 10.6063. And so that gives us 44.8063. And then for our denominator, of course, we're subtracting the x coordinates. So 21.475 minus 0 gives us back 21.475. We divide those things, and that is where we get the actual slope of 2.08644. It goes on after that. And so we can plug that back into the original equation that we were given, 
y equals 2.08644x minus the 10.6063. Finally, if we plug 19 in there, we can figure out our prediction 2.08644 times 19 minus 10.6063. We would say, well, roughly, you'd expect 29-ish chirps in that 15 second period. And so that would be my answer to that question. I hope I got it right. I'll have to go back and double check. New South Wales people, please go back and double check for me. Did I get this one right? As you answer these kinds of math questions, you can think, what's the mathematical sleight of hand going on here? What are the pieces of information that the teacher or the educator is slowly taking away from me? And when am I going to get back to a certain point where they can't take that information away anymore? You can almost think of it like a Sudoku puzzle. Of course you're not going to be given all of the blocks filled in from the very beginning because then there'd be no puzzle, there'd be nothing to do. In the same way you can't be given none of the blocks filled in because again there'd be no puzzle, there'd be nothing to do. What the educator is trying to do is figure out how do I give you just enough information to where you can get started and solve it on your own and then work your way toward the solution from there. But not so much information that it would make the process too easy or would not tell the educator the information that they want to know. Now whether the New South Wales problem did that or not, I don't know. There were a lot of steps in this one to get to the eventual point that we need to make our prediction at 19 degrees Celsius. So it was a little bit of a journey. But the information is there. In any case, I hope that was helpful for you. If so, uh, like the video. Please feel free to subscribe. I do these math minutes a couple times a week usually. Uh, and we'll see what my eighth graders think of this one.